So we're here with leading wrestling historian and author and inductee of 10 Halls of Fame, Mike Chapman. Hi, Raul. Well, thanks. Yeah, I was inducted into the Battle of Waterloo Hall of Fame in December, and it was a great honor because that's my hometown. But wrestling's been good to me, and I've worked hard all the last 50 years to promote and market the sport of wrestling. We have a, I have a question for you. Do you have sure. a, Okay, great. So even in some of the old catch wrestling manuals, even though there were pins allowed, the emphasis was on, I mean, even though there were submission holes allowed, the pin was seemed to be the most important aspect. Even Martin Burns discussed like that the match truly isn't over until your shoulders are on the mat and you're pinned, right? Could you kind of give us your thoughts on the importance of the pin in wrestling? Sure. Well, the pin is the, the home run or the knockout or the long touchdown run of wrestling, no question about it. When you hold somebody's shoulders down for two or three seconds, that's that's a tremendous accomplishment. And the pin has been paramount in college wrestling since 1905 when the first meet was held in Columbia University in New York. Frank Gotch was a pinner. He also had the feared toe hold, Raul, but as you know, he used his joint lock submissions and toe holds to intimidate people and maneuver them into position for the pin. The greatest professional wrestling match of all time was between Frank Gotch and George Hackenschmidt in Comiskey Park in 1911, and Gotch pinned him twice. He didn't get a toe hold on him, he didn't joint lock him. And I've been to 46 NCAA tournaments, and the greatest pinners I've ever seen in college wrestling were Dan Hodge, Dan Gable, and Wade Shallis. They were tremendous pinners. They were crowd favorites because of the pin. And the pin has always been an essential part of wrestling. And when I first met you and found out the, about the Catch Wrestling Alliance, that's what attracted me to it, Raul, is that you put such emphasis on the pin. Sure, they're joint lock submissions, or a guy can just get tired and say, I've had enough. But you understood the value of the pin. I've always understood the value of the pin. And then the biggest star of catch wrestling right now is Curran Jacobs, who wrestled at Michigan State University and was a terrific high school and college wrestler, and he understands the value of the pin. The joint locks are flashy and nice and important, but when you forget about the pin, you forget about the legacy of Farmer Burns and Earl Caddock and Joe Stecker and Frank Gotch. Uh, it was always about the pin for them. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. And I think it's also really the true way to show the dominance and the control over the other person. Like you really want to be going for that pin and then if you want to get the submission it'll it'll come easier if you're going for the pin first. That's a great point and you can fall into a joint lock submission at any time in a match and somebody could say that was a fluke or I just got caught but when somebody puts you on your back and holds you there and you're bridging and fighting and arching chances are it wasn't a fluke you were put there. So I think that's what a lot of true wrestlers really went for was the pin. Which isn't to say the submissions aren't important. They are. But I, I think the true measure is the pin. Great. Thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time, Mike. Well, I'm glad you came all the way out here from Los Angeles to be a part of the wind show at the NCAA wrestling tournament. Raul, you can see that we had Dan Gable here. We had Lou Bannock. We had Olympic champions all over the place. And uh, it's just a great atmosphere, and I'm so glad that the Catch Wrestling Alliance was uh, represented by you in such a class manner. And so many people came to your booth and wanted to talk about Catch Wrestling. So that was great. You're doing great things to help promote the sport of gotch and burns. Yeah, thank you.